Hi, I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. And today I'm talking about how much to charge for cleaning up a client's QuickBooks. I know that pricing work and knowing how much to charge is very challenging for most bookkeepers. And there's a lot of, of different opinions as to how much you should charge for cleaning up a client's books. I'm going to talk about uh, three me methods with you today and tell you about what they are and some of the pros and cons. The first method is to uh, charge by the hour. And a lot of new bookkeepers and accountants charge for cleanup by the hour. And the reason they do that is because they're not quite sure um, exactly what the extent is of that cleanup. And so what I hear most people say is that, um, they charge by the hour because once they get in there and start cleaning it up, they uncover all sorts of problems that take even longer than they thought. And so um, they want to make sure that they're not exposing themselves to, to losing money on an engagement and they charge by the hour. I think this is a good method if you're starting out. I would say that the challenge here is that your client doesn't know how much the work is going to cost and they don't know how long it's going to take. So that can be a challenge because um, the client may end up having sticker shock at the end when you're done, when you give them that bill <laughs> and when they, they realize that whatever you're charging is way more than what um, they thought it was going to be. I think when you're charging clients on an hourly basis, most clients just think, hey, how hard could it be? It couldn't take that long. It's just going to be a few hours. The books aren't quite that messed up. And so, um, like I said, when they get your invoice, they get that sticker shock. Here, what I would suggest then is to, to charge your client for a retainer up front. So whether that's for five hours, 10 hours, whatever that is, charge for a retainer up front so that you can be getting paid as you're doing the work and then you're not taking on the risk of not being paid at the end of the cleanup project. The second way in which you can invoice for a cleanup job is to give the client a, a range, so a dollar amount range of what your services will cost. In order to do this, then you need to be able to do a review of the client's books beforehand in order to assess what's wrong with their books. At VM Wasek, we do a paid diagnostic review of our client's books in order to determine what's wrong with the books. And based on what we see, it and determine what's wrong with their box and we do a very extensive review when when we do this diagnostic we determine what's wrong with the the box and usually i will then uh, consider how long it will take to do the cleanup although i base it on a number of hours that's just a starting point but i think if you are starting out and doing this yourself that 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 is a good way to gauge what the pricing will be. It'll be based on the number of hours. And I usually will add on some percentage on top of how long I think it will take just for administrative time. So communication with the client, internal management of the project, uh, whatever. So that it could be even up to 25% of the time that I estimated I will add on as administrative time. Let's say, for example, then that I determined that it's going to take 20 hours to clean up the client's box and that I'm going to charge $100 an hour to clean up the box. And I'm using $100 just because it's simple math. Okay, so that will be $2,000. Now, because I want to give the client a range and I want to cover myself in case um, there's something that comes up during the cleanup that I didn't realize was there, then I may tell the client it may be between um, two and three thousand dollars. So that way, the client has an idea of how much the work will cost, and I've covered myself in terms of any risk that I may be taking in giving the client 
a, a fixed price. I've given them a range now so that I don't have to take on as much risk. And then I will charge the client 50% upfront. Now it's up to you whether you would charge 50% of the $2,000 or 50% of the $3,000 in our example. But always get paid upfront. The third method for uh, pricing a, and charging for a cleanup job is uh, to do fixed pricing. And I would consider this a more advanced method. This is the method that I use in my company, VM Wasek, for cleaning up our clients' books. The reason that I can charge upfront is because I have a lot of experience in doing many, many cleanups and I have a very thorough diagnostic review. In fact, I would first do a paid diagnostic review with the client to diagnose their books, to determine what's wrong with the books. I give the client a report of my findings, and then I give them upfront pricing for my services. In this case, I'm taking the risk, but because I have so much experience in diagnosing my client's books, then uh, my risk is actually a whole lot lower because I have a very thorough review process. Um, it's a win also for the client because they know exactly how much it will cost upfront. And a client who can afford our services is much more willing to engage us when they know how much it will cost. In this scenario, I also charge 50% upfront for the cleanup. I also give the client a time frame for cleaning up their books. So I tell them it may be four weeks, it may be six weeks, it may be three weeks, whatever that is. I commit to a time frame, and that time frame for delivering the cleanup is contingent upon full cooperation from the client. And then I collect the 50% that's due at the end of the engagement. I actually collect that near the end of the engagement. So clients know that um, they need to pay for the remainder um, of the amount due before we complete our work. I hope that you find this content helpful and that it helps you to learn how to price um, your QuickBooks cleanup jobs. I'm Veronica Wasek. Check the description box below to get free resources and to join my Facebook community. If you found this content helpful, like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel. Bye.